What's up guys? Today we're going to be changing uh, spark plugs on a 3.5 EcoBoost. Now, there's a bunch of these videos out there, I get it. Yeah, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to give you my take on doing plugs on an EcoBoost. So, we're going to hop right into it. It's going to be a shorter video here. Um, the job does take a little bit of time, but it's tedious time. So, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of kind of how I do it here. First things first, you want to get a nice light so you can see what the heck you're doing. All right. Also, too, the way I do it, I'm not a super tall dude, so I deflate the tires down to give me a little bit more clearance, and then we'll be using uh, step stools and whatnot. First thing I'm going to be doing, air box, remove this charge Y right here. We're going to pull the engine cover off going to give us plenty of access and then we're going to dive right into it. Alright guys, <clears throat> so Ford did a phenomenal job creating access to the coils and the plugs. This makes me happy, okay? I'm not really a huge Ford guy. Good job Ford on this one. Got probably 8 millimeter bolts. So you got one, two, three. Unplug each coil, pull each coil up. Do the same on the other side. But yeah, guys, not a bad job. It's, it's not super difficult. So, now, let me talk about something else quick. I'm gonna touch base on something. All you guys with these EcoBoost trucks, what I would strongly recommend doing, okay? As you can see, we have right here a breather, PCV breather from the valve cover over into the intake, okay? We have one right here, breather into the intake, okay? So, this right here is positive charge pressure behind the throttle body. This one right here is suction. I highly, highly recommend getting a catch can setup, okay? This is a GDI engine. The best way to make your GDI engine last is to get a catch can installed. Now, you could mount it over there, you could mount it on the firewall somewhere, you could mount it up here. A um, million places to install one, and we'll get into like an install on a future video. But, guys, it's super cheap insurance, okay? Catch can, catch can, catch can, catch can. I'm gonna need a ratchet tool for the back side. Alright guys, don't break these connectors, okay? This is the way I do it, is put your finger in front of it so it can't go too far. You can use a screwdriver, lightly push back, just like that, okay? They're super easy to break. Be super careful, okay? 
See this tab? You're going to push that tab down with your finger and then you're going to pull the whole connector back. Now these oftentimes get very sticky or they don't really want to move, okay? See how I got to put like quite a bit of force down? Okay, so with the same tool, because we don't want to pull it um, by the wires, okay? Do not pull it by the wires. You can pull pins out. So just press down super hard here and then try to wiggle. See how stiff that is? I'm going to get some, uh, some WD-40 and just lightly hit these connectors with it. Should help us free them up. All right, guys, we got uh, some WD in these now. So basically, you're going to let it just sit for a second, and then you're going to, again, press down that clip and try to pull. Now, another thing, too, try to pull back and forth on the connector without releasing it just to kind of free it up. Then we're going to push down. Okay, see how easy that just came off? Now, here's the thing. These connectors, too, are very easy to break. Everything about this is plastic, okay? So you got to be careful with it. Now, when you pull the connector all the way off, I recommend now taking some brake cleaner and cleaning the connector, okay? You don't need to blast it all over. Just spray a little bit in the connector, clean it up. When I put these back together, I'm going to put a light layer of uh, di dielectric grease around the connector as well to help with removal next time and to help with continuity. Now the other thing is uh, you might have a difficult time actually pulling the coil out of the cylinder head and so I don't recommend using excessive force because here's the thing if you pry up on this connector you could bust the bottom of the connector off. So what I'm going to do and yes it might put little score marks on the coil but we're going to take a pliers and we're going to lift up evenly so that we don't damage the coil. All right, so we're going to grab it just like so. Okay, and we're going to evenly pull up just like that. Now, that is how you get the coils out. Now, see the base? If you see any swelling here, meaning that the coil has a big gap right here between the top and the bottom, that is means the coil is starting to fail from heat saturation. Now the only other thing I would do, just look inside the connector, verify it's nice and clean in there. Don't drop the coils or nothing like that. Um, really at this point, set them aside. This is the uh, spark plug socket that I would recommend. Nice deep well. I got a, uh, excuse me. I got a nice snap on locking extension. Pivots around. So, I'm gonna show you guys how deep these actually are. That deep socket is completely buried and then the extension sticks up slightly as you can see. So that's how you're going to do it. You're just going to go around and pull all the spark plugs out. Hopefully if you guys are watching this, you've done a spark plug or two in your life and this should be very easy. It should come out relatively easily. These aren't insanely high torque like the uh, like Tritons when you try to pull them out. These ones should be nice and simple to remove. So here's what the spark plug looks like, okay, this truck has exactly 100,000 miles on it, okay. Plugs don't look too bad. I'll tell you what, let's compare this to a new plug and see if we can compare the gap. Now as you can see, the gap is a little shorter on these new ones, which indicates we have some wear on the electrode at 100,000 miles, but I'll be honest guys, 
For a turbocharged V6, these plugs look phenomenal for 100,000 miles. Now they are worn, they do need replacement, but that is a very nice burn pattern. Nice even wear. Well, I'll take a look at the rest of them as I'm pulling them out and compare them, but man, that, uh, that looks exactly how it should look. Nice caramel color, love it. Good job, Ford. All right, only thing I didn't show you guys is this little breather does have to move on this uh, pat on the driver side cylinder head. There's a little tab on it, okay? You rotate the tab clockwise. So rotate it clockwise, push down first, wiggle a little, not hard, and then lift up, okay? Again, very easy to break. Don't ream on it, okay? Just take your time, move slow. Everyone will be happy. Now, we have room to pull the coil out. Now, the other thing is, uh, and I know I'm blocking your light here, guys. The other thing is, see this high pressure fuel pump? Well, it's got a little connector that is, uh, it doesn't have to be moved. You can actually clear the coil. But for the sake of trying to pull the coil out of the cylinder head, I would recommend unplugging that. It's got two tabs on the side that you squeeze down on really hard, and then again, wiggle it a little, and then pull back. You know, all these newer vehicles are just plastic bullshit, okay? Now, I get it, weight, et cetera, et cetera, but they're very brittle, especially after 100,000 miles, so be careful. All right, guys, you know me. I always talk about torquing shit, but here's the deal. Uh, you do have to torque these, okay? Aluminum cylinder head, steel spark plug, do not create problems for the owner, for yourself, or for the future. So, I recommend putting a very light layer of anises on the plugs. When I say light, I don't mean caking it on there. I mean a very light layer, because it's really not needed if you torque them properly, okay? Torque spec is 133 inch pounds, okay? Now for those of you that can't really do math, okay, around 11 and some change foot pounds, okay? My rule of thumb is this. If you torque spark plugs, no matter what you're working on, they're gonna be somewhere between 10 to 15 foot pounds, okay? Now, you guys with those really long ratchets cranking on them, you're way beyond 15 foot-pounds. And I'm not saying every vehicle. I'm saying most vehicles that are modern day that have aluminum heads, steel spark plugs. So, this one we're going to torque. Okay. So, just go around and do that. Yeah, sure, there's a torque for the <laughs> 8 millimeter coil bolts. Um, just don't be stupid about it. Just light pressure, a little bit of a squeeze uh, to pinch the bolt or pinch the coil down to the head, and you're good. So, that being said, uh, we're just about finished up here with this spark plug change. Now, you know, not a super difficult job. I would say for most of you guys, um, probably take you. Because again, it's a little tedious, it'll probably take you around an hour and a half-ish, something like that. Um, if you got the right tools, you know, at this point I'm only about an hour in, but I still gotta torque them all, throw the coils back on, throw it back together. So the last thing I'm gonna mention before we cut the end of the video is I would also recommend putting a light layer of dielectric grease on this coil uh, plug connector, the actual connector for it. One, it will help with lubrication pulling back out next time. Two, it'll help continuity on the pins going into the coil, but don't, don't use a lot. It's a very, very light layer, just enough to, to film the top of this, because then when you push it in, the pins are gonna push that dielectric grease in with it. If you have too much, you can actually swell the pins and it can lose continuity or cause coil issues, potentially misfire issues, okay? Now, very last thing too, is um, on the coils themselves, okay? 
put a little bit of dielectric grease inside of there. That will help again for the ease of the coil actually coming out next time. It also will help with continuity. So little stuff like that can save you time later on if you're gonna own the truck to 200K and you're doing the plugs at 100K, great. I got a news flash for you though. As the engine wears, you don't wanna go 100K and then wait till 200K to do your plugs. My recommendation, do the plugs at you know, if it was my vehicle, I'd probably be doing 85 to 90-ish, and then I would be doing them again around 170, and then if you get into the twos, I would do them at 240, 250, so you kind of shrink the interval as you go. Many reasons for it, engine wear, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is a twin turbo engine. You know, you'd be lucky to have the turbos last you 200,000 miles, let alone the timing chain if you're not changing the oil like you're supposed to be. So, uh, lastly, you know, I talked about the catch can. I would absolutely recommend doing the GDI induction services, okay? Now, you do have airflow sensor on the air box, okay? So it's not gonna work really well to try to spray the GDI cleaner through here and then have it go into the Y and then split around. So basically what I'm getting at is what I would probably do, find or uh, take this guy off right here, rev the engine up to about you know 2,500 RPM. Yeah, you're gonna have warning lights, you're gonna have stuff like that, but keep the engine running, and you can literally blast that CRC AMS oil. There's a bunch on the market. Shoot it through the intake plenum around 2,000 RPM, and it will help clean the intake valves, okay? I am going to do a video in the future when I pull a 3.5 EcoBoost manifold off. They as well have carbon problems. All the GDI engines do. Now these are a little less severe because they're turbocharged. You actually have more, more push across those valves, not as much time for stuff to cure up and set on them. But nonetheless, something I would definitely recommend doing is using intake valve GDI cleaner on your EcoBoost engine. But a catch can will definitely help with the carbon up issues as well. All right, guys, this is going to be it for the video. You guys get the general idea. You put the plugs in, you torque them, put all the coils back on, make sure you connect everything up nice, put the engine cover back on. Put the intake back on and you got yourself a freshly tuned up F-150. Now, um, here's the other thing. If you're a pro, you're going to plug into the DLC inside the car. You're going to hook your scan tool up and you're going to reset the fuel adaptations. I am going to do that for this guy. Now, a lot of you guys at home really don't have a way of doing it. And no, disconnecting the negative side of the terminal is not going to do anything, okay? These have saved memory inside the computers. They learn fuel adaptations as it goes through the mileage, but by resetting them after doing the spark plugs, it's gonna make the computer start to think a little bit and try to make more fuel compensations. At that point, you might even throw a check engine light and it might find out that there's a sensor that's not working as well as it was. You know, not trying to be pessimistic about it, but Fuel adaptations on all these newer cars should be reset when you're doing plugs, when you're doing tune-up stuff. Um, so, I'm rambling now. You guys, take it easy. This was spark plug job on a 3.5 EcoBoost engine. Take it easy, guys. I'll show you guys a little bonus I always do for my customers. I always polish the headlights. Makes the vehicle just look so much better when they're nice and clean. You know what I mean?